Hello and welcome to this feature spotlight video on Test Runner for model experimentation and optimization in Emulate 3D 2025. I'm Andrew Diebel, the product manager for Emulate 3D, and in this video we'll apply the new Test Runner to a few different simulation models and see if we can gain new insights and optimize our system designs. For those of you familiar with the experiments feature in older editions of Emulate 3D, you can think of this as a supercharged successor. We'll have more flexibility to create scenarios that perform actions before or whilst the model is running. We'll be able to compare different model variants against each other, and we can automatically generate tests using the new optimizers, which apply meta-heuristic algorithms that iteratively generate batches of tests, read the results, and then generate more tests, honing in on an optimum solution. We've covered Test Runner for Virtual Commissioning and Test Runner for Catalog Testing in previous Feature Spotlight videos. They may be useful for you to watch, but they're not a prerequisite for this video, which is on Test Runner for Simulations. We'll use a small AMR model as our first example system. This is a tutorial example created only from catalog components. It uses the AMR, smart conveyors, people, palletizers, doors and windows, and data collection catalogs. We have AMRs bringing pods from storage to pick stations, where people are pulling or depositing product according to a order schedule. This might be a preliminary design, which we're waiting to tweak using the insights from a simulation. We've already got a grasp on projected throughput, station utilization, and an AMR state breakdown by using the data collection catalog, and its new features for AMRs included in Emulate 3D 2025. This is showing us that under normal operation, the AMRs are currently the bottleneck, with our station sitting idle at times. What would happen to our pick rate if we reduced the station count? or change the pod arrangement to improve the AMR routing, or even added more AMRs into the system. Let's create some test scenarios for this layout using the new test runner. Let's change our visualization to build mode and then open up the test runner window from within Emulate 3D. We can see that it's helpfully set up a first test for us as a template. A test is a single model run for a certain model against a certain set of actions. Each test will produce a pass or fail result will record KPIs, or key performance indicators, and output the data recorded in the analysis window. We can edit the test and choose a name and description. We can see that the test applies to a model, which by default is the model we currently have open. We can set a test run speed and a duration, say 10 minutes. And finally, we can see that there's a set of actions that have been generated for this test. Let's go and edit these actions. In this case, let's create a template test which will record some basic data for us. Actions can change model properties, create faults, they can define assertions, which check for a desired result, and they can record KPIs. We can make use of the AMR framework tiles data logging and make note of how many orders went through each of those three picking tiles. Note that I'm using the copy feature for these KPIs. This is just headline data, and we'll still have access to all that deep and customizable data reporting in the analysis window, which is created from tools like the data collection catalog. Before we run our test, we just save our model and our test project. So let's go save, and we'll need to select a folder here. This is going to generate a number of test files within the folder, which specify the tests that we have set up. Let's run our test. Note that we don't have to watch the model running, and we could use the standalone test runner app, which will run Emulate 3D from the command line, and then report the results. We can check and see that yes, these results do include those KPIs which we just defined in the model actions. Now it's time to define some more interesting test scenarios. Let's make a new test schedule within our test group. We'll keep most of the test settings consistent with our last test, but we'll run it against a different set of actions. We could use the toolbar on the left to go to the actions pane, or use some of these handy buttons to create and edit the actions from here. Let's make use of the based on feature to reference our baseline actions. This is not a copy, but a reference. So if we add more KPIs to the baseline, then they'll propagate into our new actions as well. A property setter action will let us change properties within the model. This could be the number of AMRs, or the pick schedule, or a fault which might occur. More on that in the controls testing with Test Runner Spotlight video. But in this case, let's see what happens when we drop down to only two picking stations. 
And to keep it interesting, let's do this five minutes into our test run rather than from the initialization of the model. The test run very quickly, but you may be able to spot that the left hand picking station stops functioning halfway through the run. If we look at the data, we can see that the orders were rerouted to the other two stations, but the station capacity did become more of a bottleneck than the AMR transport. This means that our total throughput fell during this test. So we still need three pick stations. Let's see if we can improve the AMR performance. Let's have a quick look at the actions pane. Actions are separate from tests, as we'll see shortly. This view lets us create, organize, and edit our actions. So let's tidy them up now. Okay, now let's create some tests which really shake up and experiment with our layout. Let's see if we can improve that AMR performance by reducing congestion rather than increasing the number of AMRs. Test Runner can reference and use multiple models, not just the model you have open. We can import some different layouts which were created earlier. Layout 1 has a single file line of pods with narrow aisles between them. Layout 2 is the model which we've already tested. And Layout 3 widens those aisles, hopefully reducing the traffic and stopping those AMRs from blocking each other. There is the option to copy these models to our project folder. This creates a duplicate within the model subfolder of your test project, which is convenient if you want to zip up and share your tests with other people. Let's create a new test group. Test groups let us organize our tests. Note that tests within different groups can share models and actions. We'll fast forward the setup here for the sake of time. We've created three tests with descriptions, all using the same model actions, but applied to different models. I'd personally like to edit the display columns to show the descriptions and hide the information that I'm not particularly interested in. It makes for a cleaner look. Okay, now let's run our tests. We can see each of the models loading, running, and then outputting their data. Watching the test runs makes for a more compelling video, but remember that we could be using the standalone test runner app. This lets you run the exact same tests, but Emulate3D is launched from the command line without a user interface. And that means that our tests are going to run faster. Each test that we run will output data into the results folder. Each test generates a subfolder with a log file, all of your collected data and a JSON file for the test parameters. Looking at a summary of the test run, we can see that layout 3 provided the best throughput. Perhaps our next step could be to run the tests again, but against different actions, like having only two pick stations. Or perhaps we could experiment with different numbers of AMRs. Varying that AMR count sounds like it could require a lot of different actions to be defined, but there's a better way using the new optimizers. Let's apply the optimizers to a more complex example. Here we're experimenting with a small sawtooth merge. Each lane is given a window of opportunity to inject boxes onto a mainline. A small QuickLogic controller allows us to vary the timing and duration of each of these merge windows. We want to experiment and understand what an optimal merge window could be for this setup. We're running in full physics, so if our timings aren't quite right, then we'll see major problems. Let's open up the optimizers section of the test runner. The optimizer will generate tests for us, creating model actions that change parameters in the model. What's clever is that the optimizer listens to the results of past tests to intelligently create new batches of tests. This improves the solution with each wave of testing. It does this with a few different algorithms. Brute force is the simplest and lets us quickly generate ranges of tests. For example, our test model might have between 20 and 30 AMRs. We'll run a test for each of those numbers. The particle swarm and genetic algorithms are more complicated and more intelligent. They generate a batch of tests, collect the data, and then generate more tests depending upon which setups performed best. We'll talk about this in more detail once the tests run. Let's leave the solver settings as they are. We can always look at the documentation and tune them later on. We do need to set up a goal for our optimizer to achieve. In this case, we'll want to maximize the throughput which is being measured by an out-of-the-box data collection component. We could use custom logic to create more complex objectives to solve. Let's define the properties which the optimizer is allowed to vary. We can use any model property which is an integer, a number, or a boolean. We'll be able to define minimum and maximum bounds to ensure that we don't set unreasonable values. The optimizer will try all sorts of combinations and permutations of these properties with different values. We'll run our test from within Emulate3D as it's interesting to watch what's going on. As a reminder, if we did use that external test runner app, 
then we'll get our results much faster. The variable tracker data collector is going to show us how the optimizer tries out different solutions, some of which will work well and some of which will end with boxes on the floor. We're using a genetic algorithm for this test, which works a bit like nature, like natural selection. Tests are run in iterations or batches. If a test performs well, then variations based upon its parameters are created and run again. If the test performs badly, then the combination of test parameters are not run again. Generally speaking, the genetic algorithm is pretty slow to settle on a solution, but it does effectively explore all possible options. The alternative would be the particle swarm. This also generates tests in batches. Tests are initially created to spread across the range of different parameter values, and between each batch, each setup is nudged towards the best performing test from the last batch. This repeats until the tests congregate around an optimum solution. Generally speaking, the particle swarm quite quickly homes in on a good result, much faster than the genetic algorithm, but unless you have a large number of particles, then it may miss the best solution. We seem to have settled in on a solution. This has each lane merging three loads almost simultaneously with each other. We can run the model and verify that this looks to produce a continuous stream of boxes on the main line, which is about as performant as we can hope for. We could analyze the data using the output files in that results folder of the test project. In this example model though, I used a data collection component to display it within Emulate3D in the analysis window for convenience. We can see that the number of tests is equal to the batch size, so that's our population size or particle count, multiplied by the number of iterations. So in this case, we ran 50 tests. Our best result of 79 loads seems to be a good solution when compared to alternative setups. We could always run the tests again with more iterations to gain a higher confidence in the results. Test Runner provides a rich toolbox for us to experiment with models. We can define scenarios which let us run and analyze model variations. We can compare different model layouts against each other under a suite of different operating conditions. And we can use the optimizers to crunch data, size parameters like buffers and fleets. Test Runner can also be used to create controls testing scenarios or to automatically test your custom catalogs. Check out the other Feature Spotlight videos to see what is possible.